I'm Bruce Steinberg, and I'm here to talk about functional lighting. A couple years back, I found these wonderful hue light bulbs uh, made by Philips. They can be controlled wirelessly to change color and intensity. Now, when one designs in an untraditional space, like a gallery, one often uh, has to use household lighting or maybe track lighting. And in that case, like if it's a household light, you have to physically go up to the light to turn it on and off. Uh, or track, you're dealing with sliders, maybe a whole bunch of lights controlled in a group. Uh, with these hue lamps, I could just put the lights up there and have individual control like I do in a theater. However, they were designed for applications like this, making your living room look super cool. <laughs> so the apps provided looked like this, imprecise color control, no control over timing, bulky sliders. I wanted to do something more like this. At first I used Apple scripts executing curl commands, but it was really slow. So I started making my own program in Racket, simple hue control, a compact interface window that allows precise control over attributes, another window that displays the state of each light, conceptualized as a channel, something I'll get back to later, and a window to run cues, specific lighting states that can happen over specified times. Now, to take a step back and talk about the art of lighting design, one thing I love about it is you're constantly switching back and forth between sides of your brain. I'm gonna take you on a very abbreviated tour uh, of my process for a play called Wonder. It was a new play about the end of history, people switching bodies, houseplants turning into jungles, and being stuck in the memory of the 1968 World's Fair. After reading the script, I was especially interested in the shadows of things. We weren't going to the actual World's Fair, but a disassociated memory of it. This is one of the images I shared with the rest of the team. Then, in order to actually implement the design, I had to create a technical drafting of where the electricians should put the lights. After that, we got into the theater, and I controlled the lights through a programming interface like this one. And finally, the expression of that idea on stage. Going back to the programming part, <coughs> Most of it grew out of idioms used to instruct burly men to move giant levers. There's a concept called tracking, which implies a light stays at a specified intensity unless it is explicitly told to change. If you later go back and modify that intensity, it will not only change in the specific cue, but in every cue following until it runs into a previously programmed instruction. This stems from the way that electricians would operate their boards. They would only move levers that they had been instructed to move. The others would remain static. Now, most lighting programming languages are far from Turing complete, but they definitely are imperative. The programmer sends commands telling the equipment what to do. Typical commands might be channel seven at 70%, or group seven at color palette 20, or Q6.2 times 7.5. They also have to be fast. There's never as much time in the theater as you want there to be, and a lot needs to happen. A partial list, the performer's movement must be modified from what it was in the usually smaller rehearsal room, set changes must be practiced, sound and lights must be set, and most importantly, the performers must have time to organically grow into their roles while everything else is happening around them. So the last thing a designer wants is for everyone to wait on their programming. Thus we get computers with specialized keyboards and the shortest possible syntax for inputting commands. You can see here how a lighting board uses implicit commands to speed up programming. When you type a digit, it automatically puts the channel command in front of it. If you want to modify the time of an active queue, one simply has to type the time button and the board places the active queue number before it. There is also a distinction between the designer and the programmer of a show. The designer wants to keep their eyes on stage as much as possible, and looking at a screen gets in the way of this. Yet in many cases, the designer also wants to be involved in the low-level commands. They don't want to simply say, make the light, they don't want to simply say, make the lights on stage right brighter. Rather, it's make these specific lights this much brighter. Channel 10 through 12 and 18 through 20 at 60%. So sometimes the, sometimes the designer is literally dictating the program to another person 
who types it into a computer. This means the language must be optimized for verbal communication. Returning the hues, here's the little box that makes the magic happen. It connects to a wireless router and has a simple RESTful interface. It then uses the Zigbee light link protocol to talk to the individual bulbs, which create a mes mesh network to pass the commands along. A little bit about the Hue API. One thing simple Hue control needs to know is the current state of the bulbs. This get command returns far more information than we need. I've actually emitted some from it. Right now, simple Hue control only allows the Hue saturation color mode so I've underlined the relevant attributes. And here's an example of the put command I use to modify the lighting state. Again, relatively straightforward. There's a performance penalty for each attribute you set. So simple hue control compares the light state you want with the current state of the light and only includes the attributes that have changed in the JSON command. And now for a little demo. Well, where are you? There you are. So eh, you can't really see it on this uh, screen, but here's our main control window. Here's our lighting state window. And here's our queue window. Now, first I'm going to patch <clears throat> the lights, and patching refers to the way we um, create a reference from the physical address of the light to a conceptual channel, which we can control. For instance, here on the left light is bulb 19, and the right light is bulb 20. However, I only have 16 channels in this. So I'm going to patch bulb 19 to channel 1, and bulb 20 to channel 2. And now uh, we can select those lights and turn them on. We can make them brighter. We can change the color. And then we can, say, make that color really saturated. So I'm going to start off with the blackout for Mr. Stickman. So we're going to set that. And then we're going to save that as Q1, Q name blackout, and Q time zero, since it's just the start of the show. Now, let's say Mr. Stickman starts off in uh, the hellish world of the JVM. <laughs> so we're going to save that as Q2, uh, world of JVM. And say it fades up in five seconds. Then we restore our blackout to start the show. And we go to Q2, and it slowly fades up. However, there was a little problem with that. If you noticed, the black, when the Q started, it quickly flashed the white before it faded up red. So we're going to fix that by deleting the first Q. And then taking the intensity down and turning it off, but keeping the hue and saturation values the same. Then we're going to record that as another Q1 blackout time zero. And now we can run that Q, and it's got a nice fade just as red. Um, let's do a, something a little more complicated. We're going to do, again, a sort of relatively low level, and sort of let's make it sunny from one direction. Sunny from one direction and sort of recessive lavender from the other. That's probably a little too saturate. And let's save this as Q3, um, morning of parens. Time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so we start in our blackout, we go to the world of the JVM, and then we ascend to the 
morning OR of parens. All right, and then I'm gonna do this, turn off the mirror. Keynote. So why Racket for this program? Um, I discovered Racket about four years ago, and it turns out I actually really like parentheses. Um, <laughs> uh, I often have to take month-long breaks while working on simple hue control. Uh, for my actual job. Um, having the logic and small procedures without side effects, of course, other than the ultimate procedure that sends the command to the bridge, allows me to easily track what I did before. Right before RacketCon, I went back to optimize how I was comparing light states and was able to fix the problem in a short afternoon. Uh, most importantly, I want a command line. Uh, and this is something that's gonna be a big challenge for me and hopefully uh, maybe using some stuff from Beautiful Racket and uh, Alexis's library this morning, uh, I'll maybe get myself going. Um, as I talked about with standard lighting computers, a compact syntax is essential for agile design. If I could type in C15, A70, H30,000, S110 uh, for channel 15 at, seven, at brightness 70, hue 30,000, saturation 110, instead of moving the sliders, it would speed me up tremendously and also allow another per person to program for me. And that's it, any questions? Questions, back here in the back. Uh, you had the issue where when you first brought up out of the, uh, the blackout into the red, originally it splashed the white first. Uh, would it be possible to compare various states and end states and have, it, have the program automatically go, oh, I don't want to go into this bright and then come back down again, but properly track uh, what uh, it, the, the It would way? be. Uh, I would, um, that's something on my to-do list. But yes, I want, I want the concept of tracking in this program and also the ability to modify cues when they're not on stage. Other one? Okay. Yeah, but yes. Do you, do you know about Mike's purpose uh, theater lighting system in Mr. Ed? Uh, Mr. Well, it was originally Mr. Ed. Yeah. Uh, way yeah, back. I, yes, way back. Yes, I do. I've chatted with him a bit. Yeah, um, no. I think we have pretty different views on uh, yes. the paradigm of lighting programming. Um, right, but uh, he had an algebra developed for that. And oh. I wonder whether the algebra would work for your primitives. With, so you plug in a different carrier, but you still have the same operations, similar operations maybe for the same kind of things that would work out. Um, I would definitely like to look, look into that, though it, that kind of stuff is really far above my knowledge level. One more? All right, well, very cool, thank you. Thank you.